The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending our webinar today. My name is Jay Malanga with ShopWorks, and our subject today is Five Ways to Reduce Labor. A very important subject these days. Uh, if you've never attended one of our webinars before, the way it works is uh, it is recorded. We will record it. So we'll post it to our YouTube channel and send out links to everyone if you want to re-watch it later or share with someone at your organization. Also, uh, I can hear, uh, you can hear me, I cannot hear you. So we want you guys to ask questions during the webinar. And the way that you're going to do that is by typing into the question pane, which is part of the GoToWebinar. You can just type in your questions. I'm going to reserve time at the end of the webinar to answer all these questions. Uh, one last announcement is I am going to be giving away $100 in Amazon gift cards today. We're going to raffle those off. We're going to raffle off two of them. So two of you will receive Amazon gift cards. And the way that you're going to get entries into that gift card is to participate in the polls. So I'm going to have a couple polls where I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to share the results with you. They only take a couple seconds. And for each poll answer, you get one entry in the raffle. And we'll give away those uh, Amazon gift cards. will go out tomorrow to everyone. Okay, let's go ahead and get started then. Um, so just to give you a little background on myself, normally I don't do this, but I want you to understand the perspective of kind of this particular uh, webinar and where I'm coming from. So I was originally trained as an engineer, so I, I had to have some technology and programming background. When I was 25 years old, I started an apparel and promotional products business. I ran that for about over 10 years. And during that time, that business was grown organically from one to 16 employees. So I have owned a business very much like yours. That was a long time ago. I'm more than double 25 now, but uh, those lessons have not been forgotten. Shopworks, uh, I've been the owner or president since from 1998 to today. So this is our 25th year. And Shopworks has also grown from one to 17 employees. Um, and ShopWorks has helped over 1,300 companies in our industry automate. So automating their shop, that's kind of what we do within this industry. Um, so added up in total, I've been working in a small business for 32 plus years. So the perspective I'm going to give you today, I think is going to be very much your perspective. And that's from a traditional bootstrapped small business owner. Bootstrapped meaning, you know, I didn't start either of my businesses with, you know, a trust fund or someone investing a million dollars or anything like that. Both of these businesses, both my original uh, apparel business called Jam Graphics and Shopworks, were basically started kind of from zero, but it's all just small business stuff. So my perspective is not from a large business, it's from a small business. And before we get into my five ways to reduce labor in your business, I want to talk about some important concepts. Um, and these concepts will help you understand, and a lot of this stuff you're going to know, but it's going to help you understand, again, where I'm coming from, and it'll just give you some background on, on these ways to reduce uh, paperwork and reduce labor. So number one thing is, and this is kind of obvious, but there is a labor shortage um, in our country, probably the whole world, but certainly in America, and it's not going away soon. This is not me saying this. This is from experts are saying this. And I believe that small businesses are hit even harder than large businesses. And the reason why is because each employee that you have, each staff member, is a larger percentage of your workforce. If you have, the math is not complicated. If you have 15 people, 10 people, let's say, and two of them are out sick that day, your, your staff is down 20%. Imagine a business like a large business, any large business, that had 20% of their staff missing every day. They would not be able to operate their business. So that's one per, one thing. Um, you also have to compete wage-wise with larger companies. So that adds additional pressure on small businesses. And the third thing is because of the industry that we've chosen, the embellished products industry, this is not an easy industry. You're not pulling things off the shelf and selling them. You're custom manufacturing on short deadlines. And that means your employees cannot be plug and play. And what I mean by that is when you're a McDonald's, when you're a uh, smaller, simpler business, it's much easier to just hire people, plug them in and go. In our industry, that's not true because of the complexity of it. So these are kind of some of the things that hit you harder than they hit other businesses. Owners must adjust or risk profitability or survival. And that's my key point here. 
Um, companies that adjust to the labor shortage slash labor cost problem moving forward will thrive or have the opportunity to thrive. Those who don't will, will just won't make it. Um, and that's, again, not – this is not a J thing that I'm coming up with this. This is no – this is just the reality of our world. Our world is automating everywhere, and eliminating labor is a huge part of that. So that moves us on to important concept number two. Humans are expensive and getting more so. So humans are super – and when I say expensive, I mean you really have to think, get your mind around how expensive humans are. Um, you, you have salaries. You have the workspace that you have to pay for. If they're working from home, you lose efficiency. So if you say, oh, I'm just not going to have a workspace, okay. Well, then you're losing efficiency because employees at home are not as efficient as in the office. Um, you're having to pay for other things like their computers and stuff like that. You have PTO and benefits for employees. Employees must be managed, meaning that's additional labor to manage people called managers. And employees are not 100% reliable. They're sick. They have vacations. They have days where they're just off. They make mistakes. So in general, and I'm a human, so I'm not anti-human. But um, I have found out in all my years of running a business that humans are very expensive. Doesn't mean they're not important. They are, but they're super expensive. I want to go on to important concept number three. Time does equal money. Now, everybody says, oh, yeah, that makes sense to me. I've heard that one a million times. My father told me that. You know, most business owners I talk to, they, they say they know this, but they don't use it in their business. Um, and where that comes into play is thinking about labor. So labor is not a fixed cost. Um, and what I mean by that is when I talk to business owners and I, and I tell them a concept, let's say I'm at a trade show and I'm talking to someone, I'm like, well, you know, our software saves your, your company money because instead of having to push paper, the employee can do something more productive, like sell or produce or whatever their job is. And the, the, the constant kickback I get from that, and I get it because they're at a trade show and they think I'm selling them something, is that, um, well, no, no, but that's not true because, you know, my employee's there anyhow. You know, my employee's there, they're already being paid. Well, that's just false. It's just not correct thinking. Um, when you do reduce the time for someone to do something, it does save you money because they are free to do another task. That's the reason why you have automatic presses for screen printing, embroidery machines, any kind of production tool that makes you faster, that's why you have it. So time does equal money, and that's important. And that kind of goes into important concept number four is fixed cost investments. The other mistake I kind of see business owning, owners making is um, uh, fixed cost investments. These are usually larger upfront costs. Maybe they have, you know, let's say you're buying a press. I'm just using a press as an example. You buy a press. And I mean, it's an upfront investment and then you're going to have monthly maintenance that costs money. You're going to have to have somebody come in and service it that costs money. But your biggest expense is upfront. Now, these types of investments can be worthwhile and most a lot of times are worthwhile if the investment speeds up something or saves costs elsewhere. So the concept here is making an upfront investment can save you money on a daily hourly, monthly, yearly basis. And, and you can get large rates of return on that. Kind of tied into all this is my important concept number five, that in my experience, most business owners I talk to, they're more willing to spend on recurring labor than they are on investments to reduce labor. So most business owners, now I'm not, I use a presses and embroidery machines as examples. Those are obvious ones that most business owners say, oh yeah, we need another press because I can't get the orders out or I want to do orders faster. But on your production floor, in your office, in your shipping and receiving, there's lots of other areas where you could, a business owner can invest, make an investment to save money on labor. And my experience is that most business owners aren't willing to do that. They're more willing to spend money on labor than they are on investments to reduce labor. And I think this is backwards. I think it should be the other way. I think it's a bad practice for business owners in general. And if you look at our world, if you look at the in the news, at companies in the world, what the successful companies are doing, look at successful companies in our industry. Do some research. Everyone in every business is trying to reduce labor. That is, you know, you can't scale a business by adding people. It's just most most businesses are not scalable that way. Now, if you're doing consulting, whether a human has to consult with someone, 
then yes, that's you need more people. Although in the not too distant future, maybe not my lifetime, but in maybe children's lifetime, uh, that won't be true because you have artificial intelligence is going to be making being consultants. So you just need to kind of wrap your mind around everyone in every business is trying to reduce labor. And you should be too. And I think our industry has been woken up the last couple of years uh, by, I think it's last couple of years, the industry has kind of woken up to the fact that um, these businesses have too much labor in them. And ShopWorks, the company, and I personally have seen this because more and more people are interested in automating their businesses than they were pre-COVID. Um, the need was still there pre-COVID, but post-COVID has made it, people need it worse to reducing labor. Uh, and if you want to reduce labor, this is my important concept number six, you must spend time, energy, and money to make it happen. Reducing labor is not something that just happens organically. In fact, I think organically as you run a business, you tend to add labor. So it's the opposite. Um, to reduce labor, you must spend time, energy, and money to make it happen. And you and your staff must be willing to change. Um, and I underline staff because in many cases, business owners and managers are willing to change, but the staff are not. Um, in general, employees and staff members kind of like things the way they are. They're not concerned that it's more or less efficient for your business. It's up to the business owner to determine uh, the changes that need to be made, but you have to get your staff on board. And it's outside the scope of this webinar, uh, but there are some techniques you can use to motivate staff to embrace change like bonus plans, incentivizations, um, showing them how uh, changes can benefit them. That's a huge one um, that doesn't involve costing you money. Just showing them, hey, this is going to benefit you and showing them that. This was kind of a, a game changer for me as a business owner. The day, and it took me about 10 years, the day I understood that employees don't think like I do as the owner. They don't. So I have to use different um, motivators for staff than I do for uh, business owners or key management or business partners, you know, high level management type people. All right, let's move on. So now let's get into our, our five ways that we're going to reduce paperwork. Now, number one is a very boring subject. And I know that because when I talk to people, they're not excited about it. Uh, procedures and uh, procedures sound boring, but the reality of them is they make you more money. They do. And that's coming from my experience, whether running my, my, apparel company or running ShopWorks. Um, procedures help you standardize how employees are trained. They help you standardize internal operations. They help you standardize how you look and communicate with customers. And it's kind of out, outside the scope of, let me go step back here for a second. So the cost investment, I'm going to kind of do this for each one of these. The cost investment on procedures is low. In other words, it doesn't cost a lot of money to invest in equipment or anything to make procedures. But your time investment is high because you got to think about and make the procedures. And it also requires management employees to buy in. That's kind of what I was alluding to before. And I'm going to give you, at the end of this webinar, I'm going to upload these, this deck to you, this PDF deck. <coughs> Excuse me. And it'll have this link in it. And I'm going to click on this link. It's outside the scope of this webinar. But I've done a whole separate webinar on the benefit of procedures. And again, I know it sounds like a boring subject, but it really isn't. It can really help your business. And I'm just going to click on this link to show you. We have a ShopWorks Help website. And if I go in here and search on procedures, and you'll see the first one that comes up is Webinar Procedures Workshop. So this is a public website. You can just go there, shopworkshelp.com. And there's the Procedures Workshop. And you can, go, you can watch that uh, if you like. Um, so procedures, that's my number one. Uh, my number one way to reduce labor. Now, these things I'm giving you are not in a particular order. So I'm not saying number one is the most important or the least important. I'm just kind of giving you, uh, it's just number one because it's number one on my list. Number two is eliminate paper. Um, paper is not only killing trees, it's killing your business. Um, you know, and I'm not, uh, I think, like to think of myself as an environmental person, but I'm not overly environmental. Uh, you know, I, I think there's times where you do need to kill trees. We still do need paper in our business, but we need to minimize it. Uh, paper's slow. It's more labor to administer paper. It's prone to errors, meaning more mistakes. Uh, paper's more and more frustrating as our workforce gets younger. The younger portion of our workforce doesn't like to deal with paper. They're much more comfortable with phones, technology, videos. And also, paper is perceived by your customers as old-fashioned. So if you're out, you know, 
you guys are in a very competitive business. All businesses are competitive, but your business is very competitive. So if you're selling, you and one of your competitors is selling to the same prospect, and the your competitor is emailing them invoices and quotes and they're giving them mobile apps and they're doing this, that, and the other. And you're sending and you're sending them paper in the mail or you're faxing them a quote or you're emailing them, you know, uh, something, a quote like that. That's kind of going to be perceived as your customer's old fashioned and it puts you at a competitive disadvantage. Now, the cost investment on this one is low to medium. It depends on how you want to eliminate paper. The time investment is low to medium. And really the thing here that you need to do in my recommendation is just get your brain around how can we eliminate paper in our business. And you start small and you work your way up. And so let me show you kind of one of the small ways you can eliminate paper. This is not revolutionary thinking here what I'm showing you, but a lot of people don't do this. So this is my example of starting small. Uh, not all of my staff, but all my staff who handle, who deal with paper have scanners on their desktop and we scan paper and we save it as a digital document. And that just eliminates having to store things. It gives us the opportunity to attach paper to our internal systems, which are electronic. It's just a better way of storing information. It's easier to email around if we need to do that, to email it to a vendor or whatever. So just having these scanners and you can spend anywhere, you can see here a hundred bucks to 300 bucks on up. Um, is a very simple way to help eliminate paper. Um, so just getting your mind around the mindset of where in our organization can we eliminate paper. Um, and again, I'm just giving you a very simple example here. There's many more ways you can do it, but that's the hurdle is getting your mindset around it. Number three, oh wait, I have a, sorry, I have an opportunity for you guys to get a gift card here. So let me launch my poll. Uh, I'm a little bit behind here. So we're going to go back to procedures. So I'm going to launch my poll on procedures. This will pop up on your screen right now. And remember, if you answer this, you're getting an entry for the $50 gift card. It'll only take you a couple seconds, and I will share the results with you. Um, ba -ba -ba, we have about 40% of you have voted. Keep going, please. And, um, okay, 70%, thank you. We'll end this poll in five, four three, two, one. I'm going to close the poll and I'll share the results with you. So 10% of you responded procedures. It's all in our heads, meaning you don't have any procedures. 20% of you said about 25% and another 30% said we have some procedures. So that's 30, 60% of you are saying you're below 50% of proceduralization. 40% of you said you're pretty decent, 50 to 70% and 5% you said you're procedure rock stars. That's actually better than what we see in most of these type webinars. When, when we do our procedures webinar, we see a, a lower, lower percentage. So you guys are doing better than most, but you really want to try to be in that 70, 60, 60%, 70% range. Nobody's 100%. But what we mean by that percentage is, you know, 70% or 60% of the operations in your business are kind of proceduralized. And in that procedures webinar, we go through some ways to make easy procedures to take some of the burden off of you. Um, but again, that is money well invested. All right, that's our first poll. Sorry, got a little bit out of sync on there. Let me make sure I'm not. Uh... Okay. All right, let's move on to number three. So ditch your file servers. So a lot of people, and where this is coming from, is we used to have servers, many servers at company shop works. Servers cost money, you have to maintain them. I can't access them. They're expensive and they're a pain in the butt to manage. So my challenge to you, if you wanna reduce labor in your business is ditch your file servers. Commit to online access from anywhere cloud storage. For all of your non-art files, 100% do that, meaning the Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, any file that's not an art file, 100% ditch your file server for that. And also maybe even for your art files. The challenge with art files is they're larger files. So if you don't have good bandwidth on your internet, it might not be as, you know, opening them and saving them might be a little bit more cumbersome. But if you have good internet, I would even do it for your art files. Now, obviously Shopworks, the company is a software company. We don't have art files. So that's one you're going to have to, you know, kind of figure out for yourselves. But 100% you want to ditch your file servers that you're sharing documents and other files on. Um, there's many options for you out there. I know you've heard of many of these Google Docs, 
box.com, Dropbox. There's literally, I mean, Microsoft has a solution. Uh, everybody has them. There's dozens of others that you can use. <coughs> Excuse me. I like box.com because I feel like it's easier to administrate. It's a true file system much more than I like these other ones. So that's the one I'm kind of preferential true, preferential for me. Um, we've used it in our business for over 10 years. But, um, you know, like I said, there's lots of different options out there. Cost investment is low, anywhere from free to $300 per month. And time investment is medium. Really, it's only at the beginning you need to, you know, move your organization to cloud-based. Once you've done that, the time investment is zero. So it's just on the front end. Now, something I'd like to address, because I know some people out there are already thinking about this, is, wow, you think $300 per month is low? Okay, um, that's a great point. $300 per month is low, question mark. That's what you're thinking. Compared to owning to labor and owning, maintaining servers, yes, $300 per month is cheap. And then you got a, all the benefits. So you get access from anywhere on any device. I can access my box account on my phone, on my at my home, wherever I am on the planet. Well, that has internet. You get customer-facing benefits, meaning if I want to share files with the customer, it's easy to do that. You get version control, meaning, now again, I'm only talking about Box, but all these products have these features, or most of them. Version control, meaning, let's say uh, I inadvertently uh, overwrite one of my documents. I'm like, oh, darn, now I've lost it. No, you haven't. You haven't lost it, because all I have to do is go to my versioning. It's software, so it controls the versioning. I just restore it from a previous version. Plus, you get automatic backups. I don't have to worry about losing data. I don't have to worry about my server crapping out or somebody spilling a cup of coffee on it. It's all it's all in the cloud. It's all backed up automatically. It's all protected. So this is an employee productivity tool. You know, it's three hundred dollars per month. It's not a lot. It's more dollars for you in your pocket. And again, it's a productivity tool. And one of the things I wanted to show you, and I'm again, you can see here, or hopefully you're getting it. Part of my message of this webinar is. We run into a lot of times in selling our software that people can't believe that software could cost $300 a month or $200 a month or $500 a month or whatever it costs. And if you're just throwing the money away, if you're not getting anything from it, then of course it's a waste of money. But like, let's look at Box. So I'm comparing, let's say I have an organization with 16 people. My Box costs me $300 per month. And that's a real pretty close cost. And my average employee is $55,000 a year loaded, loaded meaning benefits plus bonus plus time off plus, plus, plus. If you want me to, I'll make this smaller. You know, some people say that's too much, $45,000. i am increasing my total employee cost by 0.5%. Okay, that's ridiculous. So what that's saying is I'm paying somebody $3,700 a month. Now I'm going to be paying them. Their cost to me is going to be you know, thirty-seven fifty plus eighteen dollars and seventy-five cents. If I'm increasing productivity, it only costs me eighteen dollars or twenty dollars a month per staff member. Okay, that's a bargain. You're 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 making money on that transaction. Okay. Um, now let's compare Box versus my business operation. So again, I'm a sixteen-person company. I'm paying three hundred dollars a month for my Box. My business does one and a half million dollars in sales, and my expenses are about one point two million. So I'm making about 300, 300 grand in profit per year. So as a percentage of revenue of my business, 0.24% of my business revenue is going towards box and 0.3% of my expenses. So what I'm telling you is this $300, if it increases efficiency, is well worth, I mean, it's not increasing your expenses and it's not affecting your revenue. And if I want to do a comparison of box versus a server, so you have to store files one way or another. So let's compare it versus a server. Again, 16 people company, $300 per box per month. I'm doing it over five years. So a five-year cost is 18 grand. That's how much I'm paying box. And when you see it that way, you're like, oh man, I'm getting screwed. I'm paying box $18,000 just for storing my files. But you got to look at what it's providing. Um, you initially, if you get a server, okay, I'm just estimating a $7,000 server. I'm saying you're spending $1,500 a month on maintaining that server. That could be anything from IT to internal labor, maintaining files, you know, something gets screwed up, you got to fix it, whatever. So I'm giving a five-year cost of $14,500, okay? So that means you're paying about $3,500 over five years more for a box, um, okay, which is a, which is a, 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 
over your total ex cost is 0.06%. Now, it's a 24% increase over a, a local server, but remember, you're getting all these other benefits, cloud-based, backups, access from anywhere, access from mobile devices, etc. So to me, these numbers, it's a no-brainer. Um, everybody thinks a little bit differently, but that's my number three way of reducing labor from your business. Okay, number four, let me make sure I haven't missed a poll here. Yes, I did miss a poll. Okay, so this is a simple yes or no. I'm going to launch it. Are you using an on-premises server? Do you have a server in your shop? So if you answer yes here, you're doing most of your file sharing via a uh, local server. If you're not, if you're using mostly cloud-based, then your answer here is going to be no, that you're using cloud-based. So go ahead and let me get your votes. I see here 70, 80% of you have voted. Um, and I'm going to end this one in a couple seconds here. So I'll close it now and share it with you. Okay, so 57% of you said yes, you are using an on-premises server, 43% no. So to those 57%, almost 60%, getting close to two-thirds, you really need to move to a cloud-based server. It's a huge benefit, huge time saver, um, and uh, you'll, you'll thank me later, hopefully. All right, number four. The number four way we're going to reduce labor, and we're kind of, you know, the, the first three I've shown you aren't really related to anything Shopworks does. Now we're getting into things that Shopworks does, and I'm not going to do a big demo for you here, but I just want to talk about workflow management. So you and your staff, if you really think about it, you spend about three quarters of all your labor processing orders. That means taking orders, processing through your shop, producing orders, shipping orders, answering customers' questions about orders. Your business is very order centric. Your business is also complicated because you're custom manufacturing. We kind of talked about that before. And I know a lot of people like QuickBooks because it's easy and accountants understand it. And you know, there's, there's some pluses for QuickBooks. But the bottom line for QuickBooks or really any accounting package, something that's just an accounting package, is they're really not working for your business because they don't handle workflow. So, and the reason I know this, because we've been, ShopWorks has been doing this for 25 years. And almost all of the 1,200 or 1,300 companies we've helped over the years has been on some form of paper, taking orders by paper, managing via paper and, and spreadsheets or magnet boards, and then processing in an accounting package, usually QuickBooks. And they're very inefficient because you're entering data multiple times. So that's extra labor. So if you want to grow your business or if you want to save labor, labor money, meaning if you want to be scalable, then you must have workflow tools to help you. Now, when you're a very small business, you don't need those workflow tools because you only have 10 orders at every one time. You can manage it with paper. When you have 30 orders or 20 orders to manage at a time, 50 orders or hundreds of orders at a time, then you've got to have something to help you better manage your business or you're just um, you know, losing money on labor. You're spending way too much money on, on labor. My recommendation is you start in your office so with regards to workflow management, you start in your office and you move to the shop floor. Now, this type of solution, number four, can be a low to high cost investment. So it typically is going to cost money to do this. Your time investment is definitely going to be high because you have to transition to the new software. You have to train staff. You have to have new procedures. You need to be trained. Um, and again, I keep mentioning procedures. But just having workflow management in general, just having it is going to help you eliminate paper. And there's many different products out there. Shopworks, we have a main product that we sell called OnSite. OnSite is our product. Uh, our biggest competitor is Printavo. There are others, many others in our industry. Uh, I don't have a comprehensive list here, but if you do some Google searching, you'll find them. Um, but you need to do your research and tire kicking before you go with one. So before you go with our product, before you go with Printavo or anybody else, this is not the kind of purchase or something you want to get into it's not like um, click, try, buy software where you just sign up, let me just get going and start my business on it in a day. It doesn't work that way or it shouldn't work that way. So you need to really spend some time evaluating, you know, what is the best product for you. So with that said, I'm just going to show you. And again, we have many webinars, uh, webinars, and we can do a demo for you. I'm going to have an offer for you at the end of this webinar. Um, if you'd like a demo, we'll do a demo for you. I just want to show you really quickly in our system, if you look at orders in progress, 
this is our workflow right now. This is the 261 orders my fictional company is working on. And I can see all the order information. And if I click on the status, I can see the status of every order. So I can see if the design's been done, if the order approval's been done, if it, the goods have been purchased, if it's shipped, produced, invoiced, everything. Um, if I want more details on an order, and these statuses change automatically as people are using the system. Uh, if I want to see more details on an order, I simply click on it. And now I'm into all the order details. We have communication tools. Uh, I can see the design. Uh, we have the items on the order, which includes size matrix for our industry, shipping instructions, everything. Everything related to this order, including payments and accounting and everything else. So this is our workflow management tool. Again, I'll have an offer for you at the end of this webinar. That's as much as I'm going to demo for you today. But this is probably, of this entire list, number four is the biggest thing that you can do for your business with regards to reducing labor. Because now your, your staff, your people doing sales, your people doing customer service, your people doing uh, production, art, shipping, receiving, they're working in a software system. And everybody knows what's going on as opposed to paper moving around. And then if you want to know what's going on, you have to go talk to someone. Um, so workflow management. Management is a huge one. And I'm going to go ahead and launch my next poll. And we're, we only got a couple more here. And the question is, how do you process orders? Uh, and there's three answers, paperwork and QuickBooks or other accounting. You're using a combination of many tools. Or the third answer is industry-specific software, something like us. You're already kind of automated with workflow management or Printavo. Uh, you're using something like that to manage your business. Um, and again, this is getting you another entry in the giveaway, so I'm trying to bribe you there. So I see 62% of you voted. Let's get that up a little higher, and I'll close this poll out. Thanks for your votes, and we'll close it in a couple seconds. Okay. All right, so let me share with you the results of this one. So the results of this one, 24% uh, of you are using paper and QuickBooks or some other accounting. 33% of you are using a combination of many tools. So that's 57%. And then 43% of you are already using industry-specific software. That's great. So I would say 43% of you are ahead, ahead of the game. The people who are only using paper and QuickBooks, uh, this is something you really should look at, you know, some sort of workflow management tool for your shop. All right, let's go to the number five way to reduce labor, and that is customer self-service. Uh, what that means is customer self-service means you're enabling customers to help themselves. So a uh, simple example, Amazon.com. In the old days, you know, you, you walked to a mall and, to buy things. And if you wanted to return something, you walked back to the mall. If you had a question, you went back to the mall. Now you have an Amazon. So on the Amazon website, you can almost do anything. You can buy things. You can return things. You can ask questions. You can... Uh, you know, post your reviews. Or, so it's customer self-service. You want customers to be able to help themselves. Younger customers in particular love this. And I even think older customers love this. Um, and this is going to make happier customers. So if customers, let's look at an example of how this would work in your business. Uh, instead of customers having to call you to find out order status, or if they have a question, instead of having to call you, what if they had a website they could go to and they could look at what's going on with their order status. Or you are proactive, and when an order is uh, shipped or when an order is invoiced, you, they get an invoiced, um, they get the, the, the invoiced email to them, or they get a notification that there's orders shipped. So that makes happier customers. And it also benefits you, it benefits your customers, and it benefits you, because less of your labor is required to, to field those phone calls and to answer questions. It can also encourage fast payment. So, for example, in the on-site system, we, because we have an accounting system built into on-site, we have a click-to-pay feature. So you can simply send an email to a customer with a little uh, link on it. They click it, and they can pay online with credit card or check or whatever they want to do. So these are all ways that you can enable customers to help themselves. Now, your cost investment can be low to medium, depending on the software. Time investment is typically pretty low. The key here is you need number four first. So before you have, you customers can help themselves, you have to be digital yourself. So you have to have some sort of workflow management tool before you can be digital enough to where customers can help themselves. If you're doing everything in paper, then obviously you can't share that information with customers through a, through a web browser. Now, Shopworks has a couple products that are in this realm 
One is called Proof Stuff. That's a productivity tool where customers can see and act on approvals. You can track them. Uh, you can prove a customer signed off on something. That's Proof Stuff. And we also have something called Manage Orders. That's a customer portal where customers can log in. They can check on order status. They can see orders and invoices and the status of those orders. They can pay for things. Um, so these are two kind of add-on products that are tied into our on-site. So on-site is our main core product, and we have proof stuff and manage orders, which are kind of customer self-service related. Um, and Printavo and other competitors might have similar type products. And again, you'd have to check all those out to see which ones are gonna work best for you. So that's number five, customer self-service, okay? Um, uh, and that's kind of a big one too, because if customers can help themselves, gonna save you labor. Now I have a bonus one for you, number six. And this is a, such a simple one, and it's crazy to me how many people are not doing this. Monitors, monitors, monitors. Every person who's in your office should have three screens, a minimum of three screens. And on your production floor, if you have a production floor, I would encourage you to just have large monitors. Monitors are so cheap these days. To not have lots of monitors and large monitors is foolish because they increase productivity by a ton. And we used to be a company many, many years ago that only had one monitor per person. Now we have, there's not one person in our company who doesn't have multiple monitors. Cost investment, cheap. Time investment, super low. It's not hard to install monitors. So I'm gonna show you some examples here. Here's kind of my desktop, what I'm working on right now. Um, I have kind of a double wide in the middle and then I have a smaller one over on the right that I use for emails. So that's my preferred setup. Uh, this is a four monitor setup. This is for a, pro, a guy who does computer programming for us. All of our customer service staff have three, at least three monitors because you can keep multiple apps open at the same time. And this is what my uh, Omar, who's our uh, chief technology officer, Omar is the head of our development department. He's kind of a monitor addict. He had nine at one time, which I don't have a picture of, but this is his six, his six monitor system that he currently uses in his office. And again, you can see how much stuff he has open, but people who do this kind of work need these monitors open. This is overkill. I think three is the sweet spot. Two is almost too little, but you can still get away with two. One's horrible. And uh, three is kind of the sweet spot. So we're wrapping up here. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about ShopWorks, the company. While I'm doing this, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask them. I'm gonna reserve some time here in a minute to answer those questions. So ShopWorks offers, uh, software design specifically for our industry. You can see what we define as our industry. So it's almost any kind of company that does embellishment. Um, we've been in business for 25 years, over 1300 installations, I told you that. You're unlikely to outgrow our product because our customers range from 100 to 100 concurrent users. I think we actually have someone even bigger than that. Um, all of our support is US-based and all of our implementation is US-based. And it takes about 30 to 45 days to get you up and running. Now, obviously installing software doesn't take 30 to 45 days, but you got training, procedures, lots of other things to consider. Um, and so that's about really realist realistically what it takes for most size businesses. It does vary from business to business. Um, I, I do wanna drop for you, let me, So I just dragged and dropped the file. Today's handout, um, it's uploading right now, has now been added to your handout. So feel free to download that handout from, from GoToWebinar. That's, the, that's just the deck I've done today. I do have one last poll today for you. And that poll question is, would you like us to reach out for a demo? We're happy to offer you a free demo. We're not a high pressure sales company. We'll just evaluate your needs. We'll show you how the software fits those needs. And if it's a fit, great. If it's not, then we completely understand. If you don't want to reach, uh, reach out for a demo at this time, that's fine. You're not offending us. Um, but if you'd like us to, if you'd like to sign up for a demo or have someone, we can do it based on your schedule. They typically take 30 minutes to an hour, depending on what you want to see. Um, just go ahead and answer. And um, I'll close this poll here in a couple seconds. And then I'll start answering questions. So... All right, let's close that one. And before, while I'm doing that, let me just say, first of all, thank you for your time today. We realize uh, everybody's time is valuable. There's our website. And let's answer some questions here. I uh, don't have a ton of them, but 
Uh, Misty says, um, is, your, is your statement that work from home employees are less efficient than those you're in the office, your opinion or based on a reputable study? Great question, Misty. My opinion. Um, and it's my opinion. So ShopWorks, the company, is a software company. And I've had remote employees for 15 years. So well before COVID, we've had remote employees. And I myself have worked from home sometimes. Sometimes I do work from home. I just think it's a natural human thing when you're working from home. You are going to be, you're going to lose some time because there's pets, there's animals around. It's too tempting to take a little bit longer lunch, you know, et cetera. Those kind of things. So I think that's one loss of efficiency. Another loss of efficiency is uh, particularly in creative fields, like so artists, uh, programmers, people like that, there is a benefit to being in the same office for me to pop my head into someone's office and say, hey, I got a quick question for you, or I just want to bounce an idea off you. It's much harder to do that. I know you can do it in Zoom meetings, et cetera. We do it all the time, but it's much easier and much more human to just poke your head into somebody's office. Um, I think there's other disadvantages. Um, obviously, people working from home is never going to leave our workforce. Um, but I've done it for 15 years. And if I, had, if I could, you know, if I could get all the staff I could in one place, then I would have everybody working out of one office. But I'm old school. I understand that. But I think time will show that work from home is not the overall solution to our any sort of labor issues. There's definitely times and places where it's better. And there's benefits to it when you're using third-party companies. We're not having to pay for that labor all the time. So, for example, uh, you know, a lot of people are outsourcing customer service to other countries where labor is cheaper. I understand that. And there are times where it can be a benefit. So there's no blanket statement to say one is better than the other. I'm just saying in general, I think when you have people that you're paying salaries or, or hourly rates and they're working from home, I think there's some inefficiencies there. Uh, Jeff asks, can you show what the production work in progress looks like visually? Would like to see what it looks like from my production floor. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll do that quickly here. Um, so there's a couple ways to look at production in our system. If you go over to, um, uh, you know, we have our production area. So I can go in there and I can just say all not produced. And this is, this is kind of meant more for back office. So it's not really, you can use it on your production floor. It's not really designed for that. So this is showing me kind of every order and I see the status and I can drill down into that order and I can see, you know, the different, we call them production events. So on this particular order, there's four things that need to be done, screen printed, and then we need to fold up the garments or you could have screen printing plus embroidery, et cetera. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at production is through a production calendar. So here I have a production calendar and I can go to a monthly view. Uh, I can see, you know, my different, by design, by, you know, what we're doing the kind of embellishment type. I can look at it by design, by company. That's kind of a calendar view. But one of the most powerful things that we have in here is a is a design for the production floor. And we call it a touch screen. It really doesn't have to be a touch screen. Um, but it's a screen designed for monitors in a production area. And typically, they're going to be a little bit bigger like this. Um, and so how this works is you're going to scan a, a piece of a code on a piece of paperwork, or you're just going to type in an order number and it's going to tell you everything about that order. So right now I'm, I'm a person on the production floor. I'm looking at this order number five, nine, eight, six, which say I scanned from a piece of paperwork or I just typed in and I can see the events, the production events. So we're doing, this is a complicated job because we're doing some uh, screen printing. We're also doing some digital printing on it. Um, and I can see that I even have more stuff that we got to do. And we're doing some embroidery on the same job. So the same job's getting printing, digital, and embroidery. And I can see the designs. If I click on a design, I can see the design details. I can get a bigger view of it. I can see all the production details of the colors and everything. We don't have those filled out yet. So there's a lot of different tools here. And the reason why it's called a touchscreen, most of our customers who are using this actually don't use a touchscreen. They actually use a keyboard and mouse but the buttons are a little bit bigger. It's designed to be used on a touchscreen. So be happy to give you more of a demo at some other time if you want to set that up. Uh, Vincent asked, what are the integration options for workflow management? We are an Inksoft shop. Okay, so Inksoft, and we do have an integration for Inksoft. And if you go to our website, okay, let me go here. Let me go Shopworks. So not our help website, which I showed you Shopworks help, just our regular website. And if you go up here to integrations and shopping carts, 
you'll see the different integrations that we currently have. Now we have a generic integration that anybody can use, but as far as direct integrations, we integrate with BrightStores, Inksoft, Order My Gear, Shopify, and WooCommerce. So Inksoft is in that list. So we do integrate with Inksoft. Now Inksoft is also recently merged with Printavo. So, you know, hopefully they will not, because we're competitors with them now, hopefully they will not kill that integration. We have no plans to kill that integration. We don't have a problem with it, but uh, it's something to think about. So Inksoft we are integrated with. Um, Denny asks, we're a sporting goods dealer. Do you have any many team sporting goods dealers using your software? We do. Um, we can get you references for that. Um, and also we are integrated with Order My Gear, which I know is, is team stores. Um, there's other team store products that we're looking at integrating with. But yes, we do have sporting good dealers that we work with. And again, we can get you reference, uh, references for that. Heidi asks, your software covers apparel, digital printing, and promo items. A sign industry. Yes, we do do sign industry, Heidi. Um, when I speak of an industry, you know, it's kind of hard um, to cover all the different things in our industry because I feel like there's a lot of sub niches within our industry. Um, now, I will say that there are asset aspects of the sign industry. So our software is more oriented for digital sign industry. If you're manufacturing like huge signs that are part of a parking lot, you know, and, and you have a you know, you're doing a, um, you know, you're, you're doing a manufacturing of that and you're kind of building it out and you want to do estimating and stuff like that. Our system has quoting in it and it has price calculators, but it doesn't have estimating design specifically for people who are building signs. It does have estimating for people who are doing digital printing, but not specifically for like sign type people. So that's something if you want to do a demo, you could see where our positives are and where our negatives are. Um, no software is going to be perfect because the sign industry is kind of weird. Um, but that would be my best suggestion to you is um, take a look at the demo. If there's big problems in it that's not going to work for you, those will be identified pretty early, pretty easily. And again, I told you we're a low pressure sales organization. I mean that. Our, our goal is to help you solve problems. If we can't solve a problem for you, then we're going to recommend that our software is not the best for you. Uh, Gene asks, we're a longtime ShopWorks customer. Uh, we're buying another customer that uses another software competitor of ours. Is there any way to merge the data? Uh, we want to use the ShopWorks for both companies. Well, there's no there's no magic button to merge the data, Gene. What you can do is uh, you can export data from Fast Manager, I'm pretty sure, and we can import some of that data into our system. However, just to be real with you about it, you know, things like orders things like that that are very specific to each piece of software, those are not going to port over. It's just going to be impossible. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick off a, a, you know, it's called a cutoff method. So you're going to say, okay, we're going to import as much data we can. And then let's say today's March 9th on April 1st, we're going to start using Shopworks for company B as well. And uh, there's, we have a whole method for doing this. Like I said, we've been doing this for 25 years so we can help you with how to do that, but it's not just simply clicking a button. There is a process that's involved. And thank you for being a longtime customer, by the way. Uh, Jeff is just giving me some demo. We would like a demo. Jeff, no problem. We'll have somebody contact you on that. Thank you for that. Um, and that's it for the questions. So we're kind of nearing our one hour mark here. I want to thank you again for your time. Um, I hope everybody has a great rest of their week. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. We will send out emails to you of the recording of this webinar. And two of you that answered polls are going to get $50 gift cards. And those will be sent out tomorrow to your email address. So thanks again, everybody, for your time. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll see you at the next webinar. Thank you.